Now Marcos had returned from his last journey in a coffin. He had died of a mysterious African plague that had turned him as yellow and wrinkled as a piece of parchment. When he realised he was ill, he set out for home with the hope that his sister's ministrations and Dr Quivers's knowledge would restore his health and youth. But he was unable to withstand the sixty days on ship and died at the latitude of Guayaquil, ravaged by fever and hallucinating about musky women and hidden treasure. The captain of the ship, an Englishman by the name of Longfellow, was about to throw him overboard wrapped in a flag. But Marcos, despite his savage appearance and his delirium, had made so many friends on board and seduced so many women that the passengers prevented him from doing so and Longfellow was obliged to store the body side by side with the vegetables of the Chinese cook to preserve it from the heat and mosquitoes of the tropics until the ship's carpenter had time to improvise a coffin. At El Callao, they obtained a more appropriate container, and several days later, the captain, furious at all of the troubles this passenger had caused the shipping company and himself, personally unloaded him without a backwards glance, surprised that not a soul was there to receive the body or cover the expenses he had incurred. Later, he learned that the post office in these latitudes was not as reliable as that of far-off England and that all his telegrams had vaporised en route.